health correspondent Nicola Hill. Nicola, uh, first of all, talk to us about these two uh, founders of BioNTech and how they have reached this point of being able to deliver very shortly a vaccine they say, they say is 90% effective because I believe it hasn't been peer reviewed yet. No, that's a really good point, actually, Adnan. It hasn't been peer reviewed. And also it's the interim results based on 94 people who became infected. They're actually going to have the full results when I think it's 160 people have been infected. But yes, um, this married couple, as you said there, I mean, it's fantastic the fact that they are Turkish and from a Turkish family. So um, Dr. Shaheen, or I think it's Professor Shaheen, because he's also a professor of cancer at Mounts University. Um, he was born in Turkey at the age of four with his family. They moved to Germany um, and he then studied to become a doctor. At university, he met his wife. Um, she is from a Turkish family. Her father was a doctor, but she was born in Germany. And the two of them have been working incredibly hard for science ever since. So I was speaking this morning to a friend of theirs, Professor Martin Backman, who's um, like them, works in immunology. He's professor of immunology at Bern University in Switzerland. And he says they're a very modest couple, very down to earth, despite their success in science and financially, you wouldn't know. His exact words were that um, Dr. Sheen is not a, a Bill Gates character. He's just somebody who is very, very hard working. And this vaccine isn't their first success. So as you said, their background is cancer and they developed um, something called Cerex, which is a way of um, finding um, cancer antigens, the, the substances on cancer cells, which has been used now a lot in cancer research and is being used to try and develop cancer vaccines. So they've already done one amazing thing for mankind. And as you said, now they've, they've developed this, this vaccine that we're all hoping and praying is going to be um, our savior against COVID-19 and is going to be available. If it passes all the rest of uh, the trials that it needs to, because there are still a few more, uh, possibly weeks to go, I suppose, if it gets uh, the go-ahead to be developed uh, at scale, what chances are there, and this actually applies to all of those vaccines that are in development and being researched, what chances are there that any company that finds a successful vaccine would share the formula with other manufacturers so that literally hundreds and hundreds of millions can be built in very, uh, can be made in very, very short time to distribute across the world? Well, this is a really good question, isn't it? Are they going to license the formula to other companies? Now, I asked that to Professor Paul Hunter this morning. He says it's a possibility, but what we have to remember is that the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, unlike the ones by Johnson & Johnson, promised by Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca and Oxford, is not on a not-for-profit basis, which is what the other ones have said. So theirs is one that they're going to charge for. Um, because it's this new mRNA vaccine, it works in a completely novel way where part of the genetic code of the virus is used. It can be made much more quickly than the traditional vaccines. Now, obviously, Oxfam, the charity, is saying that, you know, the um, developing countries won't be able to afford an expensive vaccine. They want to make it a lot cheaper than that. So I, I genuinely cannot answer the question whether Pfizer is going to license this, whether it's going to share it. But the other thing that Professor Hunter said to me this morning is that we have got all these other vaccines that are being developed. And the companies all say that they're not racing against each other. They're racing against the virus. They are working together. We will likely need more than one vaccine. I mean, if this Pfizer one is as fantastic as we've been hearing this week, um, we all hope so, it does have a couple of drawbacks. It's a two-dose vaccine. It has to be given three weeks apart. And more importantly, it has to be kept very, very, very cold. Um, there was um, a discussion this morning about whether all the nightclubs in the UK that have been closed because of lockdown are going to have to give their dry ice to GP surgeries so that people can, they, they can keep it cold enough to vaccinate it. So some of the other vaccines that are being developed don't have to be kept as cold. They might be just a single shot initially. So that's why we probably need more than one vaccine, no matter how many million, billions of doses are going to, that are going to be manufactured. Nicola, thank you so much. As always, Nicola Hill, our health correspondent in London.